Many of us have a yearning within us to leave the rat race and the chaos of modern life and retreat to a more peaceful and fulfilling existence. Most won't follow through on that urge, but for the brave souls that truly venture into a life off the grid, or at least on the fringes of the grid, there are some big mistakes that are waiting for the ignorant and naive. The biggest one is to think you can continue to have the same lifestyle with respect to energy that you're used to on the grid. More specifically, to think that you can continue to use the same devices and appliances that you use every day when you're out in your tiny home, cabin, camper van, yurt, sailboat, or RV. No, to truly live off the grid, even for a short time, means to leave most of those things behind. Sure, you can bring a gas generator with you or go to a location with shore power a few times a week to recharge batteries if that's what you want to do, but that means being tethered to a source of fuel and power. To be fully committed to a self-reliant, off-grid lifestyle means generating your own power. And you'll never be able to generate as much power or deliver it at all hours of the day like the electric utility company can. So now that I've depressed you with the cold hard reality, let me cheer you up a little bit. There is an answer. If you're a subscriber, you know that this is going to have to do with solar, and you're right. But solar is the obvious answer to off-gridding, so I won't waste your time with such an obvious answer. The key is to switch your usual devices to models that can use direct current. All of the devices and appliances in your house use alternating current, which is the type of electricity supplied through the outlets in your walls that come from the electric utility. But most of these devices switch that power back to direct current before they use it. Ever seen one of these? That's the purpose of these ugly things, is to convert that AC power to DC. All of the electronics in your house use DC, and that means basically everything will have to convert at least some of this power to DC. And this conversion is wasteful. The average AC to DC converter is about 80 to 90% efficient. Now 10% loss might not seem like a lot, but when literally everything you're running is wasting 10% of its power, that adds up. But that isn't enough of a problem to focus an entire YouTube video on. The problem's worse because most off-gridders, which are folks boondocking in RVs, camper vans, boats, and cabins, use 12 volt DC as their power source from batteries, generators, and alternators. This power is then turned into 120 volt AC for those in the United States by an inverter. 12 volt DC inverters are plentiful, cheap, and easy to find. They also match the most common deep cycle battery voltage, which is 12 volts. Almost every car, truck, and RV in the world uses 12 volt DC. So why is this bad? Because 12 volt DC requires 10 times the amount of current to provide the same amount of watts as 120 volt AC. And high current is the enemy of batteries. High current can actually make lead acid batteries provide overall less power than they can at low current. But even with lithium batteries, there's a limit to the amount of current that a single or a couple batteries can provide and that means a hard cap on the amount of power your inverter can provide. Let's look at an example. There are low wattage microwaves on the market, and we'll get to that in a few minutes, but the average small microwave consumes about 1000 watts of AC power. So if we have a 12 volt battery as a power source supplying power to an inverter to power the microwave, and that inverter is 90% efficient, the battery will have to provide 1110 watts, or 92 and a half amps. Luckily, microwaves don't have to run very long, so the overall amount of power consumed won't break the bank. But in order to supply almost 100 amps for a minute or two, you need a pretty stout battery or multiple batteries. For example, with a lithium battery, you're looking at between $600 and $900 for a 12 volt deep cycle battery capable of continually producing 100 amps. And forget about having the air conditioner or coffee maker or any other devices running at the same time. We just aren't used to making these kind of compromises in life. So to help with the situation, simply change as many of your devices and appliances to run directly from DC power as you possibly can, and consider changing your electrical system to 24 volt or 48 volt. I'll leave the 24 volt and 48 volt topics for another video, but in essence, by using a 24 volt DC electrical system in your off-grid home, you'll cut the current in half, giving your batteries a break, and wasting less electricity in voltage drop. They're hard to find, and some may appear at first glance to be more expensive, but there are direct current powered versions of most appliances. 
and even the ones that don't really have a direct current option, like microwaves, will have a lower energy version available that will be more friendly to your off-grid systems. But does switching to a DC version of a fridge, for example, really help that much? Especially if it costs more up front. Let's take a look. We all need a freezer for long-term food storage, even off the grid. So let's compare this run-of-the-mill alternating current model that you can get from almost any appliance store with this specialized direct current model of about the same size. A lot of people might freak out at the radical difference in price of these two models, but let's keep digging. First, let's compare the performance of the two models. The DC model uses a lot less power than the AC model. Some of you might be tempted to believe that the DC model uses a thermoelectric cooler instead of refrigerant, but that isn't the case. The main difference is that the engineers know that the DC model will be used off the grid, typically powered by batteries, and need to be more efficient. So they have a full 4.6 inches of polyurethane insulation. That and part of the increased cost goes to using a more energy efficient compressor. Even though these two freezers look the same, they're engineered very differently. So what does this mean in terms of cost? Surely it takes years and years to make up the difference in the initial cost, right? There are several ways to financially analyze this, so I'll show you two methods. First, let's pretend the freezer is the only thing in the world you need to power. It requires 345 watt hours per day to run, so that's almost 29 amp hours of energy. If we give ourselves some cushion and go to the next common size up, a 45 amp hour lithium battery that could run this freezer around the clock with no problem like the MillerTech premium 45 amp hour battery costs us $355. The freezer can connect directly to the battery so there's nothing else to buy. Please note we're ignoring the charging source for the battery in this video as that would open up a much bigger can of worms and make the DC freezer look even better frankly. But the total cost for the battery and the freezer is $1430 US dollars. For the AC model, the manufacturer gives us a yearly energy consumption figure, so if we translate that to a daily figure, we get 590 watt hours per day. But this freezer uses a big compressor and requires being put on a 15 amp circuit to handle that huge momentary rush of current to start the compressor. So even though the freezer won't use anywhere near 15 amps at 120 volts for more than a split second, we still have to provide an inverter that's big enough to handle that power surge which is up to 1800 watts. So a 2000 watt model would be the most common size that could handle that and they typically cost about 300 US dollars. But remember, they're not 100% efficient. So let's say the inverter is 90% efficient. That means we need to pull 657 watt hours from the battery to provide 590 watt hours to the freezer after accounting for the 10% loss. 657 watt hours at 12 volts is almost 55 amp hours. Again, sizing up to the next most common size that gives us plenty of headroom to run that freezer every day puts us at the 75 amp hour size and the MillerTech premium 75 amp hour battery costs $599. Adding up the cost of the inverter, battery, and freezer is $1417. That's pretty much the same as the DC model, but we haven't accounted for the extra cost of wiring the inverter to the battery. So let's say that the first cost analysis is even. Maybe that isn't enough to convince you to go with the DC model. So let's analyze it a different way. What if we convert each kilowatt hour of energy consumed to dollars and cents? The average cost of electricity in the United States as of July 2021 is 13.9 cents per kilowatt hour. If you do the math on the daily energy required to run the two models, you can see that the DC model is almost twice as efficient. Okay, okay, so who really cares about an imaginary $16 per year, right? Well, there's more to the story, and here's where you really bang your head against the wall trying to fit your old lifestyle into the box of your new off-grid lifestyle. The AC model will push your electrical system to its limits. 1800 watts of surge power is no joke, and that's only one device. If you had alternating current versions of all your appliances, you would need a similar electrical system to your house in your RV, or your tiny home, or your log cabin, and that just isn't practical. Think of all the extra complexity that adds to the system. More points of failure, more weight and square footage taken up by the electrical gizmos, and more safety issues. And we didn't even talk about the jumbo-sized solar panel system or gas generator you would need to recharge each day. 
In conclusion, it's a mistake to think you can take all the trappings of your grid-connected life out into the boonies and use them the same way. You have to carefully weigh and measure what your needs are and separate them from your wants. And you have to find more energy efficient and space saving models to make it work when you don't have an unlimited amount of power at the flip of a switch. Thanks for watching this video. If you like the content, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing.